This video is brought to you by JLC PCB. So far, I have used LoRa transceiver modules with Arduino, Node MCU, ESP8266, and STM32 controller boards. Today, for the first time, I'm going to use these long range LoRa SX12700 transceiver modules with ESP32 controller boards. As you know, ESP32 is much more powerful than the ESP8266 and Arduino. It is even faster than the Raspberry Pi Pico and STM32. And as you might know, ESP32 has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And this is what makes the ESP32 much more popular than all the other controller boards. So in today's episode, you will learn how to make a long range wireless home automation system using ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth modules, LoRa SX12700 transceiver modules, Fill volt SPDT type relays, 110 or 220 volt AC bulbs and some switches. In this project, I'm using two ESP32 modules. One is the sender and the other one is the receiver. I have connected everything as per the circuit diagram, which I will explain in a minute. You might have noticed that I'm using two different versions of the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth modules. I could use the similar ESP32 modules, but the reason I'm using different versions is that to explain, it doesn't matter which one of these you use, the code is going to work just fine. You can see four buttons on the transmitter side. Using these four buttons, I'm going to control certain loads on the receiver side. For demonstration purposes, I have put four bulbs on the receiver side, which are connected to four relays. Besides lights, you can use any other 110 or 220 volt AC loads or use any other DC type loads. If you want to use 110 or 220 volt AC supply, you must not forget to use protective gloves because 110 or 220 volt AC can prove fatal. So as far as possible, you must ensure the presence of a friend or any companion while working on such projects. When the AC supply is on, do not touch the relay contacts. Now let's go ahead and kick off our practical demonstration. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Feel free to visit their website jlcpcb.com slash scale to not only find out what awesome PCB and assembly services they offer, but also to easily upload your Gerber files. It automatically detects the number of layers and dimensions. Select the number of PCBs you want to order. Select your favorite PCB color. The price is automatically updated as you select different features. Finally, you can click on the Save to Cart button. You will only need to pay $2 for 1 to 4 layers PCBs and $0 for your PCB assembly. Besides this, JLC PCB also offers industrial 3D printing services starting at only $1. You can start by clicking on the first link in the description. Now you can see that I have turned on the receiver side. I am powering up the transmitter side through a 4S lithium ion battery pack. You may also use a 3S lipo battery pack or any other type of battery or a DC adapter for this purpose. If you also want to make such a 4S lithium ion battery pack, then you can watch my video. I will provide a link in the description. You can make the transmitter side much smaller by designing your own PCB and you can use small toggle switches to control the AC or DC loads.
I can randomly turn on or turn off any light and it's working quite superbly. I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system work. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This is the transmitter side circuit diagram. I'm using 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM7805 linear voltage regulator. The output of the regulator is connected with the VN pin of the ESP32 module. The NSS pin of the LoRa module is connected with the GPIO5. The MOSI pin is connected with the GPIO23. The MISO is connected with the GPIO19 and the SCK pin of the SX127 at LoRa transceiver module is connected with the GPIO18. Make sure the ground of the ESP32 module is connected with the ground pin of the LoRa transceiver module. On the left side, you can see four switches are connected with the GPIO pins 33, 26, 14 and 13. Now let's take a look at the receiver side circuit diagram. The connections of the 5 volt regulated power supply and SX127 at LoRa transceiver module remain exactly the same. Four SPDT type relays are connected with the GPIO pins 27, 14, 12 and 13. You can connect AC or DC loads with the relays common and normally open contacts. You can also see freewheeling diodes are connected across the relays coil pins. You can use 1 and 4007 diodes. I'm using a pair of 10 kilo ohm and 2 and 2222 NPN transistor to control each relay. So using these connections you can make your own 4 channel relay module or you can use a ready made 4 channel relay module. These are the PCB ports which I received from the JLC PCB as you can see the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the Blake solder mask looks amazing. Next I started off by placing the components and completed the soldering job. This is how the PCB boards look after soldering all the components. Finally, I connected everything as per the circuit diagram which I just explained. Now let's take a look at the programming. This project is based on two programs. This program is written for the transmitter side whereas this program is written for the receiver side. Before you start the programming, first of all make sure you download the LoRa library. The Adafruit JFX and Adafruit SSD 1306 libraries are used with the OLED display module. So if you want to display the feedback message on the OLED display then you will need these two libraries. I have edit code for the feedback message. Actually these codes are from my previous project based on the Arduino. I have already explained the programming. I practically demonstrated the feedback message feature. This is an important feature. When you press a button on the transmitter side, the receiver side sends you a feedback message that the desired load is turned on or turned off. I also practically checked the communication range of the LoRa transceiver modules. So I highly recommend you guys need to watch my previous video if you want to learn the most important things. Anyway, if you don't want the feedback message feature, then simply don't connect the OLED display module. The code is still going to work. As in my case, I'm not using an OLED display module. So that's all about the programming. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.